In this presentation, we will record a transaction related to salaries expense into our accounting system. Get ready, because here we go with Applos. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to jump on over to our Excel file to see what our objective will be. We're going to be in tab number six, tab number six, where we have our transaction. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to be jumping on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. We're going to be in tab number six. So we're in tab number six. We're going to be recording the salaries expense. Now note that uh, if you're going to be processing payroll through the system, that's going to be an added level of difficulty. We're not going to go through the actual payroll process uh, within this system. We're just going to enter the transaction related to it like any other basically type of expense uh if you want if you want to learn more about payroll we do have a course on uh payroll and how the payroll transactions work but that's a whole nother uh course in and of itself to be processing through the payroll however if you think about the payroll for a normal type of business and for a not-for-profit you have pretty much this many of the same kind of uh, uh concerns about it with regards to withholdings federal income tax, state income tax, social security, Medicare uh, types of withholdings on that. So, and you can also think about doing that either through the, the accounting system, recording it into the accounting system, or seeing if you have a third party, which is common as well to help you out with the payroll, if, if you have the, the payroll for it, and that could be done the bigger companies or something like an ADP or a paychecks, which would be a third party that could help to process the payroll and then you'd still have to enter that data in some way, shape, or form into your accounting system. So if we were to simplify the payroll transaction down to, you know, its bare, its basis, uh, and and not think about the, the withholdings and all that kind of stuff, then typically you would just simply have salaries expense being the expense, and then the credit to cash. So the purposes of our practice problem to record the expenses. That's what we're going to be recording. So we're just going to record a straight transaction. You can kind of think of it as if we had a third party like an ADP or paychecks. And then we're taking that information, putting that into the system with a straight uh, journal entry for us. Again, not considering the, uh, the withholdings here. Then we're also going to enter basically our adjusting entry. This is something that you would typically do at the end of uh, the month. In our case, the end of January where you're going to say, okay, there's some portion of the period that uh, work was done for which payment wasn't made because payroll will typically be done on a uh, on more of a cash basis or on a payroll basis rather than on uh, a strict accrual basis, meaning you get paid every two weeks or paid every week, uh, bi-weekly, weekly, semi-monthly. Uh, and that means that the pay date or when you're going to record, it's not going to line up with the cutoff date into the month or year and therefore there's going to be time that the workers worked for which they had not yet been paid but are going to be paid in the following period and therefore we should have an adjusting entry at the end of the time period which will make it easier for the payroll to be to be processed and not have to worry with the added timing problem uh, as well as make the financial statements correct as of the cutoff date all right so let's record the first one first kind of a standard type of uh, journal entry here as we're going to record it we're going to go back on into our system system back into Applos. So let's go then to the accounting fund and accounting. We're going to enter a transaction. Now, the easiest way to enter this transaction because cash is affected will most likely be to use a register type of format. So we're going to go kind of just directly into uh, the register here. So we'll go into the register. We're going to say the date of this transaction is going to be the 6th of January. So let's bring it on back to January. January uh, number six. So let's bring that. And then I'm going to tab through this. So the payee, I'm going to say is uh, employee. Whoops. I'm going to add this employee one. So that's going to be our employee. And again, I'm going to record like in the entire payroll as if it's one uh, transaction here. So again, you can you can imagine multiple people getting paid uh, with multiple with multiple transactions, possibly that would look similar. And then you might a comment could be something like payroll. The amount is we're going to be putting the 209460. So 209460. And the deposit, it's not a deposit. Check. Now, if it's a check number, you can assign uh, the check number here. And then you can go to the printing feature. Uh, notice there's a printing feature here. If you're going to print checks, then what you would have to do is get the pre-printed checks. You'd put them into the printer. 
and then you'd have to make sure they're lined up correctly and whatnot. The, the checks would already have the check number on it. So uh, you, if you were going to print it or if it's something that has already been processed, we're imagining it's processed by like an ADP or a Paychex electronically. And now we're entering it into our system here. So we're not going to have the check number. And then we're going to say the account. We're looking for uh, an expense account. And we have the salaries. So salaries looks good. We'll pick that one up. Now, if it wasn't salaries, if we were saying it's some other kind of payroll, we could go to the register and change that. Maybe, maybe I just want it to be called wages or something. Maybe they're not salaried pay, but uh, we can do that. I would pay, I would use whatever accounts, accounts are given to us. And then if we want to tweak the name for them, we can do so. So then the fund that we're going to have is going to be unrestricted. So we're going to go unrestricted. Now note that most of the expenses, the way we're going to format this, will be going into the unrestricted. And, uh, and that's going to be because if we pay, if we paid something out, that's going to trigger the release of funds or assets from a restricted to unrestricted, we will record that release, uh, happening, uh, with a transaction. So we'll show the release going from a restricted to an unrestricted category, and then the expense being in the unrestricted category. So that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to be setting this up. So then we got, so that means that pretty much all the expenses, all the expenses then will be in the unrestricted category. And if we need to unrestrict them, we'll do that with a transaction. We will see that at a later time. So then we have the uh, unrestricted further tag. We're not gonna add that now. We will be going back in. Now note, if I go back to our system here, back into uh, Excel, notice now we're entering the expenses. We do have a requirement to enter these expenses in two ways in essence. One, we have the statement of activities, which we're showing here by function, what we use them for, meaning the programs and then the general admin and the fundraising. And then we need to break them uh, out further by what their objective is or their nature, which is what you would normally think with expenses. So rent, salaries, telephone, so on. Now we could put all this in one report technically, but again, that would be overwhelming to the reader. So we, what we want to do is create a report with like one or the other of these type of formats and then break out another report kind of like this, which will break out this information for the expenses by what they are used for in order to break them out to what they are used for, such as programs like education, community service, and the admin or management in general and fundraising, we will need to be using some type of percentages that we will have to determine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to enter all this information at this point uh, uh, just just into the system without breaking that out and then we'll go back in and show you how to break that out and that might be an easy way to to do this kind of breakout because then you can kind of you can separate and specialize the duties between entering the the uh, expenses and between breaking out the expenses to the various categories they need to be broken out into also note that the salaries here we have the one line item if we need more than one line item then we can hit the split button so i can say we want to hit the split button and that's going to give us more line items so now we, of course we know that this is the checking account this is basically a, a register this will be decreasing the checking account the other side will be going to the expense account here and if we needed to add then another expense account we could do so by adding uh, another expense account below all right so let's go ahead and uh, submit it so we're going to submit then we'll jump on over to our financial statements, our reports. So we're going to go to the reports to the upper right. We're then going to go into the balance sheet and income statement, the special ones, the fund ones, however, because yes, they're more fun because they're fund ones. And then we're going to go back up top and right click on that tab. We're going to duplicate that tab, duplicating the tab, going back to the tab, the left, going back to the reports to the right at the top right. Then we're going to open the other report, which is going to be the income statement, the income statement by fund income statement by fund going back up top right clicking on that report let's duplicate that report now we got the balance sheet we got the income statement then we got another tab that we can do stuff on let's go back on over to the balance sheet then adjusting the date and we're going to bring it on back to january january 31st january 31st so there we have that and we have entered our transaction decreasing the checking account so I would also add our, we're going to go to the uh, report layout and I like to add that total column. So I'm going to say add the total column and apply. Now note this is also something that's pretty much a default that I would, I would like to have most of the time with the total there. 
So I could say I'd like to save this, and I'm going to save this as uh, custom balance sheet by fund report. So balance sheet by fund report, and we may we may want to do we we will do further customization to it uh, at a later point. So, but just note, so I'll actually not save it at this point in time. So we'll talk about that later. But just note, you any changes that you make, you could you could save the report, and then you might even want to think about having saved reports in terms of internal reports, reports that you're going to be jumping into all the time like this, which can be more like worksheet type of reports. And then you can have, and I know I misspelled custom, but I'm not going to save it, so it's okay. And then you can also have the external reports, the ones that are as close, as good as possible that you can then give to somebody else for the external reporting and any kind of last minute changes you need to do then that you can't do in the accounting system, you can do by exporting it to Excel. So we'll talk more about that uh, reporting in the future. But in any case, there's the total column here. Then we're going to go into this item. So if we go into the to the checking account, uh, we're going to... So I went into the unrestricted portion. There's the 209460 and there is, it's a check type of form because we entered it into the register as a decrease. So a check type of form. Let's go back. I'm going to go back on over to then our uh, balance sheet. Let's then go to the income statement. So if we take a look at the income statement, we want to, we want to see it for the year to date. So this year to date, that's what we would like to see. Then let's hit the old drop down on the right. Let's see the total column. I'd like to see the total column. So we'll say there that is. And now we have our expense down below. So we've got our expenses, the rent, and now the salary. So there is our uh, salaries expense. Now note that this is in the unrestricted column. We don't have it yet broken out by the tags in the unrestricted column. We will do so. And once we do, uh, we will then go back on over here I'm going to go to the to the last tab. I'm going to go to the reports drop down. So we'll go to the reports and then we will be running our report going back on down by tag. So now we got the unrestricted income statement. So you know, just keep visualizing how this is going to work. We got our income statement broken out between our funds restricted and unrestricted. And then we'll have our fund totals down here that you could see the fund totals. And then we will be considering uh, that information with regards to the, the further breakout by tag. So then if we go to our tags, then we will have uh, the, the income unrestricted, which will tie out to the unrestricted column and the income statement restricted, which will tie out to the restricted column. So that's kind of the hierarchy you want to just start to visualize in your mind and just repeat visualizing in your mind. So now we're going to record this second item. We're going to go back to the first tab and this is going to be an adjusting entry. So we'll get it, we'll get used to and we'll be able to then now uh, record something with a journal entry. So I'm going to go back up top. We're going to go back up to our second uh, transaction here and which is going to be the adjusting entry. Now there's no cash affected here and this is an adjusting entry which typically would be done with a journal entry. This is something that you might have like an accounting department or something do at the end of the period or the end of the year to be more on like an accrual type of basis. So we're going to go back on over and I'm going to say, all right, now we're going to go to the accounting. Once again, we're going to be recording another transaction, but this time not with the register, but a journal entry. So we have to, we have to go back to basically the debits and credits at this point. Now I'm going to make this one as of the end of the year, because that's when the cutoff date, that's usually when we enter this information as of. So we'll put uh, January 31st in the memo. I'm just going to put adjusting entry something like that for you know wages and then we're going to say that uh, the wages account or we put it as salaries salaries here is going to be debited it's going to be in the unrestricted that's correct and then we're going to not have a we could have a note which is adj entry and then the debit is going to be for 16800 one six eight zero zero and then we're going to have the other side being the it's going to be a payable account like salaries payable or something like that now it's unlikely that we're going to have a salaries payable in the drop down here so we're going to have to add an account to do that let's jump on over to another tab so i'm going to right click on this tab up top again i'm going to duplicate this tab 
And then we're gonna go to the chart of accounts. We're gonna go to the fund uh, and accounting. We're gonna go to the accounting drop down. We're gonna go to the account list. So we're in the account list. Now within the account list, we need a liability type of account. So we need something in the liability section here and it's gonna be a current liability. So, and then I'm gonna hit the old plus button. It's gonna be something under the accounts payable. So it's gotta be in the numbering system between 21 zero zero and two five zero zero so how about uh twenty one five twenty one five zero so we'll say two one five zero and then the type of account uh do we want to use a register Nah, i don't think we need a register and then i'm going to say the name is going to be the uh wages payable and you could have accrued wages or accrued salary or salaries payable However, I'm also going to change the, the salary's expense just so you can see how to change that as well. Uh, activity, we're going to say uh, operating, investing, and financing. I'll keep it in the operating. And then we're going to say the status enabled sub account no. So I'm going to say save on that. Then it's going to reorder it within our category according to the account number. So it's reordered by the account number within the category. Let's also make the change while we're here. To the expenses down below let's go to the expenses down below where we, where we had salaries expense and still have salaries expense but are now changing it by selecting that salaries expense and we would we would like to call it wages wages is what we were used to so we're going to say that's what we want so i'm going to say save that all right so that should change that one we already have something posted to it that's okay we didn't delete the account it's still there we just changed the name for it so then we're going to go on back on over to the first tab we're then going to be selecting the drop down and we want to go on down to uh, the liabilities now where we have wages payable. That's going to be the other side. Uh, I'll put it into the uh, unrestricted. Let's keep it at the unrestricted. I'm going to say ADJ entry credit 16800. So there we have the debits and the credits for our transaction. So we're just looking at these two numbers up here. Note that we're not breaking out uh, the, the salaries again to the, the unrestricted tag categories to 20, 20, 20, 40. We'll talk about that later. We'll be back here at a later point. We're at the 16.8 debit, 16.8 credit. That looks good. This is going to be increasing the salaries expense on the income statement, increasing the wages payable on the balance sheet. So let's go ahead and say post on that and then check that out. See if I and have interpreted what's going to happen correctly let's go on back on over here and to the balance sheet we're in the balance sheet and then we'll refresh the screen so we are working with fresh reports so we're going to refresh the screen and there we have our wages table if i go into that uh, 16 8 then of course we're going to get to our our transaction you'll note here it says it's a, an adjusting entry and in the transaction type it's a journal entry so that transaction type is something I suggest getting used to so you get an idea of what what transaction types do what so that's gonna be that side then the other side if we go to the income statement, going on over to the income statement by fund and then refreshing that screen so we're working with fresh reports once again then we're in the wages notice we changed the name now to wages because it was it was salaries before but we we preferred wages so we changed it and then we have down here in the transaction type where we have the check and then we have now the journal entry which was our month end adjusting entry so that's going to be it for now notice i i am giving uh, trial balances so if you if you have access to the to the data files you should have a trial balance where you could check your numbers on the trial balance uh, at, at each point along the way if you so choose that's it for now let's get out of here